Hello, 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 and welcome to another Hades 2 video. Today we're going to be going over the new resources that were shown off during the technical tests that Supergiant put on recently. Um, the first thing we're going to be talking about is the collectible resources around the map. The first one is Molly, of course. If you know anything about Greek mythology, this is like the flowers that grow from the blood of the gods. So it's pretty cool that they're including this. This seems like it's going to be something that you gather by hand and you just find it as you're doing your runs. Typically, there's a lot of items like this. Some require special tools that we'll get into in a little bit. On this story, you'll see that there's something called ashes. So once you clear a room, one of the rewards you can get is ashes. Ashes are going to act kind of like darkness, it seems like. They'll be used in more meta progression based things. Um, specifically, as we get a little bit further into this video, there's this tarot card system, and this is how you're going to unlock things like death defiances, increased damage, stuff like that. There's also another resource that seems like another meta progression item. It's this... Um, this blue material it's another one you get after you clear a room this is also used in some of the other areas so this would be meta progression based as well there's something called the cauldron which i'll also get to in just a little bit this will be used in your incantations which will help you further progress the storyline of the game you also note that there's still palms of power there's still centaur hearts obols have been changed to gold it's not a huge deal and this this is called cinder it's one of the items that you can get once you defeat a boss we aren't sure exactly how they'll be used yet there is one instance where it will be used in the the tarot card system but beyond that i don't we don't have a whole lot the developers did say that there would be some other uses i assume and things like the incantations and progressing the game further here is where you'll like be selecting your weapons and you'll also be able to pick what you're taking out with you. So there's a spade that you can pull out, which will allow you to collect resources and bring them back to the crossroads, which is like your home base. And you'll be able to plant different seeds, which will help you grow and collect resources faster. Or there's this pickaxe, which you can use to mine silver whenever you run across that. Death cap, that's another thing. It seems like you can use it mostly to trade with the broker. The broker is something you'll get a little bit later once we get through some of the progression with the cauldron. It's something that you can use these items to get. The wretched broker works just like you did in Hades 1 where he'll basically trade items with you. So here you can see us. If you don't have the tool, you cannot like actually use it. So it's important that you kind of know what you're going for when you're going into a run, what tool to bring with you. And here's that, that planting thing I was telling you about a little bit earlier where you can select seeds that you've gathered with your shovel and bring them back to your home base. This is a nightshade. And basically in five, whatever time increment this is, I'm not quite sure what that is. It came back once the run was complete. So I, I'm not sure exactly what that is. Maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's something else. Um, and it seems like there are ways to expand the garden system in this. So you could definitely like gather resources. I don't think you can gather absolutely everything this way, but it, it will be a nice way just to not have to grind so hard for all the resources. Like sometimes you had to when you were playing Hades 1. This is another resource. It's called Bones. It's mostly used to trade with the Wretched Broker. So it's it's nothing too crazy, but it will be helpful when you're trying to get something else that maybe he only has or that's harder to find while you're doing your runs. And you can check your inventory at any time, which is really, really nice. There's also the faded list of minor prophecies again. You get this by doing stuff with the cauldron that I've mentioned before. Um, and this will basically give you those big rewards. And it's it's kind of that like completionist checklist that we all know and love. Um, I'm really excited that this is back. And let's get to the actual cauldron because I think this is a really interesting way. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like the, the house contractor. So yeah, you can see here, you can get the Mercantile Fortune, you can get Forget-Me-Not. Forget-Me-Not is really cool because it allows you to track the ingredients that you need for your quest. It's something that would be would have been fantastic in Hades 1, and I'm really, really excited to see it in this game. I think it will be a huge benefit. There's Reagent Sensing that will help you not miss things while you're on your run. It will basically ping it whenever you're running around, and you can kind of see the cool animation that you get when you do one of these incantations. It's The artwork is always gorgeous in this game. 
And each thing requires a different amount of resources to use. Um, so it's important that you're paying attention when you're trying to get these things. But the forget me not will be amazing. It'll be so, so helpful. And as we know, our beautiful wretched broker who's lost his home in the underworld is now up here in the crossroads with us. But he'll be used for trading goods just like he was in the, the previous game. So you can see how the forget me not thing works right here where it has your quest in the log and it will show you like what you need to gather. And it also shows you like when you're in menus like this, it will have the needed resource little tag. So if you need that, it's it's easy enough to find. So like you need 60 bones in order to get this bait fabric, which is another resource that we haven't run across at this point. I'm not sure if there's other ways to get that fabric or not, but it's a Hades game. So probably I would assume but I'm so happy to see him back and the artwork around him. It's just so, so cute. I love it so much. I'm so excited for those games, friends. Those games, whatever. You know what I mean. This is also where you'll be getting your... The, the cauldron is also where you'll get your tools. So things like the pickaxe I was mentioning that you need to gather some of the resources like silver, you'll be unlocking those here. Same thing with a spade. So it is important to come back, check this often after you win or perish on your runs as one does in this game. Um, but just like normal Hades, it's important to go around, talk to people, get the story and figure out what all you need to progress your adventure because it doesn't just happen through runs as we all should know by now. It happens when you're actually like talking and interacting with the NPCs. I, I think that's one of the things that makes this roguelike so unique. And finally, we'll get to the Altar of Ashes, I think is what it's called. It, it reminds me of tarot cards, so I think of them that way. This is similar to the Mirror of Darkness in Zagreus's room. This is where your big meta progression will come along in terms of like you getting stronger as a player. So things like Death Defiances, the Sorcerer, so channeling your magic and Omega moves makes everything move slower. So it's kind of like if you ever play Transistor, it slows down time. It's a really cool effect. Um, and I think it makes the game pretty dynamic. And as you unlock each one of these, it opens up new, new ones. So it opens up the adjacent card so you get two and four if you unlock one so wayward sun this one will give you some healing so you restore two health or twice that if you have less than 30 percent of your overall health huge thing when you're early on um definitely something that people would want to take if they're really struggling getting past the first few areas and i know a lot of people don't have access yet but it's still fun to talk about and then deal 22 percent damage to foes in your cast so Melanoi is very much so a witch. Um, she has a lot of magic abilities. She leans into the casting a lot more than Zagreus ever did. And I really like that. And then if you get four, then you unlock seven and 11. I can read, I can read Roman numerals. And each one of these will have a different one. So this one gained 20 health and 20 magic. And then the other one, I don't remember exactly what that is. So you have one where your sprints faster, you get a death defiance, which is huge. There is something called grasp that is pretty interesting. So each arcana card requires a certain amount of grasp. If you go over it, it cannot be activated. And I think you gain more grasp by, you may use the gauge in the top right to increase your grasp. grasp. So I think that requires certain meta progression things um, that you have to unlock through the realm. So that's that psyche, the blue material that we saw earlier. So in order to make sure, so you can see it says like 9 of 12 in the top corner there. Um, basically, you have to make sure that you have enough grasp in order to hold this magic, if you will. And so it's a really interesting way to balance the run where you can't just invest in absolutely everything unless you've gathered enough of that materials. I think it's a way to control the power spike that some players get if they if they can collect ashes too quickly as opposed to focusing on some of the other things. So it, it kind of forces you to go through more runs, which I, I think is pretty smart. But a lot of interesting things, and there will definitely be more than this amount of cards available. Um, this is just what's available in the technical test. I, I know they said multiple times that they would have more than nine cards I did the number wrong. I realize that now. It's fine, though. Um, 
but yeah, it's really, it's really cool. I'm really excited what they've done with the new resources in the game. I like that it's kind of like a reflavored version. It feels like a proper sequel to Hades 1. Let me know what you think in the comments below, what you think of the new overhauls of the systems, if you're excited about any of these in particular, or if you're worried about how any of these might function. Um, make sure to like and subscribe for more Hades 2 content, and ciao, friends.